Good afternoon. How are you all? All right. So today's topic is opening up a staffing agency. I know when you register for this webinar, you know what I'm talking about. Someone approached you and you know a lot of people, or maybe you are in the special community that um, English is not your first language and you're really fluent with the other language. So you have a way to contact your community people. Then there is a big company come around and goes, hey, can you help me? And we don't have people to work and we want people to work and we like you to make some money too. So we'll do a deal. So today I am going to uh, demystify this good deal and I'm making it a reality for everyone. Of course, who is in business not for making money? Everyone does. And even if nonprofit, they still have to make money. Otherwise, they cannot make payroll, right? So everyone in business is for making money. When you receive this kind of good deal, and then you want to make sure that you're really going to make it. So before we start, let me share screen with you on a couple of things prior to get dive into the content. And what I'm showing you is our website, communitycpa.com. And if anyone asks you, what is community CPA? What do you mean by that? And yes, we mean by community CPA. We are a community of business owners that needed CPA help. And you can go to HR blog because they are not in your uh, wheelhouse and they, they do different things and they don't serve you the same way you're expecting or they don't they simply don't do company taxes and then you don't go to KPMG because these people are like aliens and you don't know how to talk to them they might speak English in such a weird way that you don't even know what they're talking about unlike what I can speak I speak English, right? I really do speak very simple English. And I, I feel ashamed about that. I wish I could knock off very complicated words on people, make them dazzling and not knowing what they're listening. I don't know how to do that. So my English is simple, but my understanding of the rules and regulations and tax code and all of these legality things related to money, I understood them deeply. And today's topic is opening up a staffing agency benefit and risk analysis. And this is everyone. The reason we bring up this title, this, this webinar, is because there's so many of you are calling for this, are asking, Ying, am I making money if I have $5 markup on each hour the people is working? Great question. We will do that calculation today. All right. I always want to introduce myself because I'm looking at you, your list and uh, quite a few of you are not someone that I see before. And um, I serve on the National Taxpayer Advocacy Panel. This is a panel. This is a group of people that is a federally appointed um, volunteers. So I'm one of those volunteers and uh, to provide advice to IRS to make IRS an agency that understand put taxpayer first, right? And that's my email and you can uh, put in recommendation on the things that doesn't work out with you, uh, with you between you and IRS and things can improve. And the, you know, my responsibility on the panel is to bring that forward and move your issue to the place where that can be resolved for many of the taxpayers, not just you, right? And I also have a book on Amazon called Appointment with Ying at 8 a.m. This is a book about starting up a business. So at Moline's event, I'll bring my book over. So if you like to purchase my book and at the event, the book will go for $10 a book. But I think on Amazon, I want to say that it's maybe $13. I don't remember. So you can buy the book on the Amazon. All right. And this is the one that I was just showing you. Please register for IES Immigrant Entrepreneur Summit at Illinois. 
And uh, again, before I start the whiteboard, I want to say that information shared on webinar and is really, it is a free knowledge to you. So we don't take any responsibility unless you're engaging us to service you. And the community CPA can do all kinds of services for your successful business, right? So all of our small business owners who join Community CPA are the successful small businesses, are the one that with a lot of future ahead of them, they just need a yellow brick road to be laid out so they can go to the odds. And we are the one laying the yellow brick road. And we know what to guide you, what knowledge to give you, how to disseminate the knowledge down to basics so you understand it. And we don't play jargons. And I really, like I said, my English is so simple. Uh, I'm afraid of people uh, doing big words for me. So I don't do big words for anybody else. All right. So now I'm going to stop sharing and the bot share my whiteboard. Then we start, right? Um, my whiteboard is hiding right here. I will end the slide and stay away from this one and coming up to here. All right. This is my web whiteboard. This is where I am going to talk to you. So we are going to draw, we're going to write, we'll make a note. You don't have to worry about taking a picture of this right now. You just focus on listening and later on, and if you want a picture of it, in case you didn't do while you're driving, and you can just email Catherine at communitycpa.com and she'll give you a copy of this uh, whiteboard, this thing I drew here. And, or you can do that when I finish talking with everything, right? So you can make a complete picture. And up here you go, this is my email address. So you can have my email address. I also mentioned to you about Catherine's communitycpa.com. So now let's talk about staffing agency. So when you got approached by someone and are wanting you to do a staffing agency, you, from the tax structure standpoint, you have a choices. You can run it under your personal name as a sole proprietor. You can also run that as an LLC, and you can also run that as S Corp. You can also run your staffing agency as a C Corp. Okay, so you want to you want to know that well when I just started and I want to spend the least money I could, and what is the best way to run a staffing agency? I will say that no matter what, this one, you don't spend any money to, to, to set it up. So this is the cheapest one, but you want to set them up either on LLC, S Corp or C Corp, because you want the entity protection. This is the subject the lawyers would talk to you about when you go to set up a company, they are considering your, your risk, the risk from business endeavor. And today our risk is not from the legal standpoint. We are talking about money. So I am talking about risk of you losing more than what you're getting, even though the cash is coming in, you got paid 70,000, 100,000, Oh, feels so good. It's like, wow, I can get a check of 100,000. I've never seen this kind of check before, but not knowing that your obligation is 120,000. And now we want to talk about that risk. I want to teach you how to calculate that so you don't fall into this kind of trap because the they are large company employees or owners. They know the game. They know the game better than you. And if you have never ever had a business, just suddenly inspired by having a business idea and well, you know, Ying, how could I not do it? Because I can find someone, I pay minimum wage for $10 and they pay me 20. You don't make it. 
I will calculate that for you. But I want you to first, foremost, set up a company for it. So not a sole proprietor, period. So that's not a choice. And you either have these three. Then now you ask me, okay, Ying, just in the very simple way, tell me what is the best one to do? I will tell you this. If you make net profit, giving the fact that you know how to calculate net profit, right? Net profit is your total income, your big check minus all your expenses. Then you have left over. If you have $25,000 more net, right? You will be on the S corp. And if you have $250,000 net profit, you stay on course C corp. Simple way to give you, there's a whole article I can write about why it is that. And I'm actually writing about my uh, second book it's called Appointment with Ying at 10 a.m. In that book, and I will write about things like this. So these are the threshold, not by somebody's textbook. I didn't read it anywhere, but it is our experience with So our experience is truly the small businesses experience. So you want to get go by what I suggested and to think of what you're gonna form. So you may say that, well, I don't even know what I'm going to make, but let's say I don't make a lot. So I would start with LLC. That's fine. You can start with LLC. So with LLC, you can always later on elect to be a S Corp. And you can also elect to be a C Corp. Right? So you really have a way, you don't have to change your EIN number, you don't have to change your checking account, your banker, and you can stay the same, but you can move yourself from LLC to S Corp and from S Corp to C Corp, right? So this is where entity side, that's it. This, this knowledge itself takes an hour to explain, but today I want to save majority of our time on calculating the risk, calculating the dollars. So now I decided my staffing agency going to be a LLC. And I decided, and I am going to hire people here. I am going to rent people there. Basically, you're renting people out. Basically, that's why they give you this nice English staffing company. You are a staffing company. You are the one that renting people out. So people, people's salary is what? Is your cost of goods sold. Just like you are a restaurant, and you use material, make them into dishes, you sell them. So your cost of goods sold is material, is vegetable. But in the staffing agency, people is your inventory. People is your cost of goods sold. People is what you're gonna make money out of, okay? So you are renting people out. So now you're gonna hire. The reason you got approached by whoever approaching you, telling you that, oh, do this, do this, and I'm going to pay you. Those big company was telling you that we need people. So here have this big company. And to you, told you that if you form a company, I pay $30 an hour on worker and I don't care how you get them.
They write it in there because that's what they say. That's what their contract says. I give, they give you 20 pages contract. It's just these two sentences. Okay. So they give you a price. They say that they will pay you. And the minimum wage out there is $10. And they say, you know people, so you can literally pay people $10 an hour, but we pay you 30. Isn't that a good deal? Such a good deal. So you calculate, you say, oh, how many can you give? Yeah, how many do you need? How many people do you need? They say 100. They want 100 people. Constant means that they always want 100. So 100 people, if I use math, 100 people times eight hours a day times 30, This is how much a day they will pay you. If they have 100 people from you, they work eight hours and you get $24,000 a day. That's eight hours, that equals to the day. That's 100 equals to people. And the 30, that's the unit price they give you. A week and you're thinking I know what you're thinking you're thinking man okay my my calculation I'm going to get a hundred people eight hours times ten I'm so good I know a lot of people they can work for ten dollar an hour they'll be so happy I'll be good so here your cost, 8,000, 24,000 you got minus 8,000 equals to 16,000. This is what you are dreaming of, profit. You say to Ying that, ah, in one week, I'm going to make 16,000. Of course my profit, gonna go over 25,000. No, 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 I don't want LC. Now I need to be S Corp to begin with. Good thinking. A lot of people, a lot of our small business people who just started business will fall into this selling. This is selling. They are selling. I literally can name those big, big companies. I'm so upset with them doing this, but I, what I can do is to educate the folks on the other side to make sure that you get a reasonable deal, okay? So they are selling you a business, basically. And it looks like you're gonna make a lot of money. So now let's do reality check. So what really is the cost? So this is the part that this webinar is all about to, to give you the reality. So I still want you to be in business with the staffing agency. I'm not saying that you don't, but when you do, I want you to do it calculatively, right? to know that you're gonna make it. You're truly, really gonna make it. The big company is truly, really trying to sustain small businesses out there. Really is looking out for you, have you grow. I would love the world to be this way, but it's not very often. What I see many cases is our folks don't have a lot of very deep payroll related knowledge, they fall short. And they are wondering, Ying, I don't understand. I'm literally getting 250,000 twice a month. Checks, big checks, huge checks. I don't understand why I don't make it. 
And now this come, I'm going to broke and I can't operate. Have to close. You can close, but payroll liability is trust fund. Trust fund don't get going, don't get diminished by time. Trust fund follows you all the way to your grave until you sell every piece of your property to pay to the government. So what is trust fund? Let's understand that, that concept. Some taxes are trust fund, means they are the funds, trust fund, no ING. Trust fund, it is the money that you received on Sales tax is trust fund. You received sales tax on behalf of Department of Revenue in that state. It's not your money. You're just being trusted to hold it and then submit it. If you don't file, you don't submit, you are charged with that money you owe to the government. It doesn't expire. It doesn't go away. It, it does go away if you die and you don't have anything. But if you die, you left your house, great. That trust fund can go there, get your house. This is trust fund, payroll taxes. Social Security Medicare that you collected from your employees. The withholding that you collected from your employees. Those are the trust fund. I'm not talking about the Social Security Medicare, that portion you contributed with your business. If your business go bankruptcy, and that portion of Social Security Medicare can go in bankruptcy because that's a company payment to the employees. But if your employee give you their portion of their paycheck for you to submit to IRS and Social Security Administration and you didn't, that is trust fund violation that can go to jail. You will have to pay it no matter what. So we're talking about very serious offenses here if you don't do the agency right. So this is how you operate. So you are actually, let's say we run a payroll for the 100 people. So you paid, let's say, the reality is that you can't get anybody at $10. And you know that. So even though when you bought in this business ideas, you were thinking of paying minimum wage. Nah, you can't. And people don't work minimum wage. Yeah, there may be people willing to work minimum wage, then they probably don't have social security number to give you. How are you gonna do payroll? You can't. So you're dealing with people who has work status already because these hundred people who, if they don't have work status and you hire them, the risk is on you. And I'll explain to you what kind of risk. So now you have 100 people and you can't pay $10 an hour. In fact, they all have to be around $15. I am giving very real numbers, folks, because this is literally our cases with our client, okay? And so you're paying $15 an hour. So that gives you what? The $15 times eight hours, I'm going to pull up my calculator because I know I'm going to use it. So let me see. Sorry. You wish that I'm so good with calculating, right? Yeah. That's my secret. I don't know how to calculate it without a calculator. And um, so sometimes I say that I don't know how to write English without spelling check. So if you see mistakes on spelling on here and it just, and it's okay, it's yin. What else can you do? She's like that. You know, I always, um, I use my immigration status because I'm not born in the US and English is my second language. Man, I take advantage of that, right? <laughs> so if it is too hard to answer, I just say, I don't understand. 
<laughs> I know you. I know you are laughing because that's just what I do, and I, I I try not to do that. But I'm so used to really admit the shortage of my English, and I got used to that. So fifteen dollars times eight hours times one hundred people, folks. What is that number? Twelve thousand. So now you got 12,000, but payroll is not just for that, right? The payroll you have to add what? You have to add 941 taxes, right? 941 taxes is social security. Uh, C-I-A-L, you can see that. Medicare and what? Withholding, both federal and the state, right? So these two and that reduces the total you give to the 12,000 because that's come out of the that's come out of the employee's check, right? So these are reduces that. But there is another set of social security and the Medicare. That is your set, right? So this part of your set and you can simplify that. It's about 8%, it's 8 point some percent, just to simplify our calculation so I can end up giving you a real magic number, okay? You follow me, we say 10%. So you need to add 10% of 12,000, that gives you what? 1,200 to your paycheck because that's your match. What else you need to add folks? Work comp workers compensation and this one depends depends on what business you are in let's say you are in construction and i have a video uh, you can check the title and just type in workers compensation then you will understand how that works but let me give you the ratio if you have people who works on the field the bodily injury is possible, and then you want to budget for 20%. It is something around three to 18. For extreme cases, and they have 25%. So we just take 20%. 20% of whatever you pay to people. So what is that? Isn't that $2,400? Am I right? 20% of 12,000, so that's 2,400. So now, what else is in here? Unemployment insurance. This one is range from 3% to whatever percentage based on experience. I will just give an average of 20%. So now in here, if you are a construction company, you I want you to budget for 20%. Okay? What else? Nothing else? You have general business liability. Maybe that is not tied to the payroll, but it is your, your company's overall. And then that general business liability, and I recommend you to do a small percentage on your payroll. So you always carved out with that amount. It is a very small amount. And you can based on that to make it say 1%. Right? So these are your related. If you don't have health insurance, of course you don't have that, you don't add it. If you don't have 401k, you don't add it. If you don't have a paid time off, you don't add it. But if you do have paid time off, you need to add it because that's your cost. 
And what, how do you calculate that cost? You just use their rate times the time off you're gonna pay. So that amount you add into here, so you calculate everything accordingly. So now let's just look at our percentage. So we have what? 10%, 20%, 20%, 1%. Where am I now? 51%? Am I right? 51% total. That means when I have someone, I pay $15, I need to up by 51% in order to know the real rate. So 51% added $7.65. So 15 plus $7.65, that gives me 22.65. So the money you make to here, folks, because they were giving us $30, right? So now you are looking at 22.65. So that's your real cost for $15 of payroll, not $15. Okay. So now we got this number. When you have a comp to the company, you do, right? If you're running 100 people payroll, you think you're running it for free? No, you have admin people on it, do you? So let me ask you, how much are you gonna pay a full-time accountant? Run your payroll, do your admin, and your hunt or your hire, they're gonna quit and come, quit and come. For each person, for each one number, you probably have to replace three times. So your real employee in the system running is going to be 400. Someone needs to handle that. So who is that someone? That is your assistant or is your CPA or is your lawyer, whoever that is. So how much do you budget for that? And you will be budgeting, say, for 70,000 a year, right? 70,000 is not a exaggerated number. So 70,000. So now you know your difference is, your difference right now, it is $7.35, right? This is your profit per hour. So if we hire someone at 70K to manage the mess, divided by 7.35 profit, So this person, when I divided this one, the $7.35 is the, is the profit we gain on each hour for the worker to work. So you may have a total number of hours to put together. So if I use 7.35 divided by 70, what I'm getting hours, I must create in my whole company in order to pay for this guy. That total hours is 9,523 hours. Because I was using the 7.35, I divided into the 7,000 because this is the total salary, right? I divided that number because Five would make up the 70,000. So that's the 9,523. So I need to work 9,500 in order to make the 7.35 profit. 33 hours divided by um, 40, 40 hours a week. So let's look at how many weeks we're talking about. We're talking about 238 weeks. 
and divided by again by 52 weeks, that would give us people. So we need we need four point, we need five people. Five worker working 2080 hours a year to support. 70K employee. Okay, but my calculation here is very tight because I assume nothing. I say 7.35 is going to be used for my admin support 100%. So I got five worker designated to five workers making their profit is all gonna designate it to my admin. And then the rest of the worker I have, it is the money I make for the company. And then the rest of the worker you make for the company, and then you want to budget one more thing I give you, okay? One more thing. Cause I already talked about the taxes, right? Then you know that is 51%. And whatever you, whatever you got paid, you know what you have to pay for your people. And you think about some 51% of what you pay to your people, that is your payroll cost. That you can run away, that you have to pay, okay? So that leave you whatever that is. So in my example, I am pretty generous with the gap between the big company give you versus what you are, what you are using. And I have seen my folks with only $4 in between. No way. $4 in between, you would lose money. I have one more big item to mention to you, and I want you to stay tuned and hear them. I'm using different pen and pencil to write about this additional cost because this one would cost you, if you experience that, would cost you all your profit and the plus the attorney CPA fees. So we have a saying in the business that once they get audited and all they're making for the past 10 years is returned to the government. That's not a joke, that's true. And this is how much of a compliance you have here when you have a staffing agency. So people who come to audit you, we're talking about audit, and the compliance. And the staffing agency has a very high compliance audit. Let me list the agencies who would be interested to audit you. This is also why your big company boy and don't want them. They don't want to be audited. That's why they give you the monkey to you. Okay, so let me tell you who are the auditors. Department of Labor. Department of Labor are the one making sure that you pay overtime on every second your people worked. And if you pay cash under the table, there's no proof. And you say that, well, I did pay him $20 an hour. He took $10 on cash. I just don't have any record. What I have on record is $10. That is useless. You still gonna be charged with not paying over, over time to that worker, okay? It only takes the worker a call to Department of Labor, get you reported, then you are in trouble for the next three years. So Department of Labor, and I do not even agree with the kind of audit they do, but they do. I don't think the audit they do is fair in the cases I experienced. And some employee just calls for department labor, then they come to audit the business owner. Business owner is already so hard at work. They don't really make anything here and they you know, didn't have a document for lunch break for the worker, and then they charge with the time for the lunch break. And even for 
you know, if the business owner provided housing, that's not allowed to deduct their salary. There's just a bunch of rules that really ties people's hand to be nice. And as a business owner, I want you to be nice. I am nice, but you do not want to be nice and to violate any rules. That is not a way to go. So Department of Labor, if they say you owe your person $100 over, over time, and they charge you $200 because they have this thing called liquidated damage. What does that mean? I don't know. It is two weird, weird terms put together. And whatever you owe to the employee, you double. And they give that all to the employee. What does that do? That encourages people to report their business owner. That's all. It's reality, okay, folks? And it is nothing good or bad. And I, of course, support their job because if they don't do their job, there may be people are abusing other people and they don't care about whether these employees are citizens or not, illegal and not illegal and documented, not documented, they don't care. They thought the Department, Department of Labor just care. There is a human body working there. Treat them fairly, regardless of their immigration status. So with that, you want to be really diligent. If you are having trouble, 100 people, then you start hiring people with no ID. These people with no ID has human right to call Department of Labor, tell Department of Labor that you pay them not enough, um, you know, Look, I don't have any pay, but I work there. Here's a video of me working. What are you going to do? You're saying that, oh, I paid under the table, and here is the $100 I paid him. And, you, you know, yeah, you may resolve a Department of Labor issue. Then you open up IRS issue. There's no win. But there is a way to deal with that issue. And this is where you need a professional advice. You cannot just pretend it didn't exist in your business, okay? Now, Department of, Department of Labor is one on the top because they are most active and they are, their charges is most severe. We have business got charged for a million dollars, almost 500,000 times two million. Okay, so it is not a thing I make up here to scare you. It is reality. And I don't, you know, I actually, um, I have seen those audits done really well too, you know, really help the business owner. But I have also seen um, the auditors are just filled with hatred to small businesses. I have seen these, that auditor. And too unfortunate, I know that person, but I hope you don't end up with her, okay? But Department of Labor is the number one. Number two, workforce. If you're in Iowa, you know workforce, which is the state agency. And with other, with other state, they call the different names, but they're all the same. They're the unemployment insurance. They are the one will do audit on your people because they believe every tenant it should be employee. And what they do is when they find out you are not renting the $100, uh, the 100 people through payroll, you are actually doing 1099. Man, that's a big audit waiting to happen. That's a time bomb waiting to explode. Okay, so Workforce will come and change all of your 1099 to W-2. Then what do you owe? You owe 51% of whatever the 1099 number is. Not a small number, folks. Okay? And so that is the second one. IRS. So what about IRS? The IRS 
can come to your payroll and telling you that your 941 amount is not paid, um, you know, your, your dollars and we are going to levy your account and we're going to investigate whether you have 1089, that should be W2. Or they found you are using the wrong ID, they go, we are going to send you a notice and have you resolve the W-2 ID number issue. These are all compliance folks. They're coming to you. And with technology developed in the computer system, the government between Social Security Administration and IRS already start working together. You know, one example I tell you, it used to be Social Security number, later on you receive Social Security number, you can go back to amend your tax return, receive all the earned income tax credit. So long ago, you can do that because when you got Social Security number, you can go back. And there is no connections between, you know, whether the IT number is for what, the old number, a new number. So just when you got a Social Security number, you didn't file tax, everything. Now they know you're going through immigration process. So they know that before you got your social security number, you don't entitle to these things. So now when you do it this way, they reject you because the true government, immigration IRS finally connected the dots. So social security administration and IRS finally connected the dot. So if you submit W-2, which is the number is now right, Social Security Administration reject your filing and then goes to IRS, go for your investigation. So it's a risk, a big risk, okay? And us, it's not done. There's more. Work comp audit. What is a workers comp audit? That's annually, every year. And if you're not the lucky one, it's everyone is lucky one. So work come audit is every year. So what they come to do is they look at your 100 people. They go, wow, that's a roofer. I should suppose to charge you 25%. Oh, that is the accountant. Okay, 3%. And or they look at your um, 1099. They go, you should need to pay for the 1099 anyway. So they add all of them into there for you to pay. So work come audit is to catch up on premium charges for you. That's a huge amount for you to pay. You can imagine that if it is 25% on your payroll, that's a lot of percent. You have a lot of money to pay, okay? So these are the audit you are getting into and our big company boy getting out of. What a deal, right? So if I give you a price tag on these ones, you can hardly make it. If you don't mark up 100% and above, okay? So if you can find, the problem is that you, you got this um, fixed amount from this big company and you are thinking that, okay, $30, that's a lot. You know, I'm really good. And you need to consider the job market. You know, right nowadays, the job market is not the same as in 2019. It's definitely not the same from 2019. And every job is increasing price. You just saw that UPS was paying their driver $40. And I'll tell you that's not true because I have UPS people and we know their, we know their work. They're paid like $15 an hour. So I think whoever putting their payroll um, online is just trying to steer the pot and then making all of you not happy with what you got because I got $40. Oh, yes, I was kidding. So I haven't really seen any announcement out of UPS to see whether they have any comment to that the social media post. But a truck driver making $40 an hour so that gives you an expectation, folks. You may be getting $30 from the big company, but people you hire, they want $40. And what are you going to do? So you really should not 
in today's world, give them a fixed dollar amount. You need to tell your big company that my markup is 50%, 51% is my cost. So to make money, I need 100% markup. And whatever I pay, you just pay me 100% on top. So that way, you're always winning. But of course, you're going to tell me that, Ying, if you tell me to negotiate like that, I will not have the business. Maybe you don't have the business. Why do you want a business that doesn't bring all these personal liabilities to you? These are trust fund, baby. You're not going to get away from it. You have to pay. So with that, I will just say that this business need a good thinking. If you have questions related to this type of business, we are the expert. I have seen too many. We have seen from the IT workers all the way to construction workers. And we also have attorney here does immigration visa on work visa. So we understand how all of these visa works, how the H2 works, right? You can hire seasonal contractor to work for you. There's so many ways to do it right, but to help the big company and taking over their risk and your fee has to be based on what you spent because you can't even predict what happens in the next six months. We're going through recession. We're going through recession with all the employees have this ideal thinking that they're all bosses. Nobody wants to be employee, nobody. That becoming a mentality, small business owners, you can innovate. You can thrive over that. There's way to do it. And I'm not just giving you green news so you are like, Ying, you just destroyed my future. No. And I'm just prevented a bad future for you by you understanding the risk related to this calculation. So I calculated a $30 fixed fee on a $15 job. And what kind of job pays 15? No job pays 15. They owe about 20. If I use $20 an hour, then I do 51%, then you suddenly don't have that much margin. If I use $20 times 1.51, 20 times 1.51, so that's 30.20. So if this one goes up to $20, you are losing money because your cost is 30.20. They are only paying you 30. You need to tell your business person, this is the risk you are taking from them to yourself. Give a price on this one before you move forward. And I'll tell you that if you're, you, if you're audited by Department of Labor, and I will tell you to budget for $5,000 to $10,000 fee. fee. And then budget for all of the dollar they want times two to your workers. If you're audited by workforce or fee, then budget for whatever workforce asks you to pay. They don't do, they don't times two, but they are still big dollars because whatever they say 1099, you need to time 51%. That's what you need to pay. IRS budget for $3,500 fee. And then whatever they want you to pay, you have to pay. And under IRS, there's so many possibilities to be audited. Notice on W2, 1099 W2, whether they are the right classification. And then in case your 941 bounces and your bounce fee and your bounce classification, your installation, all of these things you need to do. Work compounded every year, budget for $400. So those are the cost fees, not to talk about the penalties or the calculation from the government that you no way can convince them to be on your side because they're the one coming in. They come in to fix problem. How could you not have problem? You must have. Otherwise they come in for nothing. Hmm. Doesn't sound right. Doesn't sound 
That's what the government would do. They will be wasting their time. So they come for a reason. For every audit, there's a reason, okay? So with that, I want to say, we conclude today's talk. It is a lot of information, a lot of my opinions and my personal experience. I'm not saying that everyone experienced the same, but I have been in this business for 30 years, old enough, long enough, see enough and know what to tell you. And I hope you take one or two pointers from here. And if you need more information about your agency, felt like you're doing something that I didn't cover, which I didn't. I didn't cover the big piece of no ID, okay? That whole piece is another talk. And so then you can contact us and we can talk about what you can do to eliminate your risk and to have a business that can survive and thrive to the future. All right, I will talk to you all again, not on Tuesday because I'm seeing you on Tuesday at Illinois Moline at Tax Later Center. Remember, and go on to IES website, just type in IESUSA.org on your search bar, you'll find it. And go to Illinois, uh, you know, if you don't want to search, you don't want to go online, make that payment, and you just email me or email Catherine, and there's not many days left. Or if you feel encouraged with what we're saying here, interested in what we are doing here, let your friends know too, come to the event. And I'll see you there on Tuesday. Okay, bye-bye.